almost six months have passed since the start of the war, and the Japanese behemoth had proved to be almost unstoppable across the Pacific. Last week we saw them complete their invasion of Burma, another victory in a long string of triumphs, yet we also saw there a huge participation by one of the most forgotten allies of World War II, nationalist China. Today we're going to see a war resume in the Chinese mainland, as the Japanese prepare for a new offensive in retaliation for their participation in the Doolittle Raid. And while we witness this struggle, why not rest assured that you have some land out there that's perfectly safe? Make it happen with our sponsor, Established Titles, who can make you a lord or lady by selling you a miniature plot of land in Scotland, where all landowners can claim these titles, or give these titles to someone as a gift. They plant a tree with every order to preserve picturesque woodland and biodiversity, and they support global charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future. Buy as little as one square foot of land in Scotland, and get a certificate to identify the plot and prove your claim. This allows you to get Lord or Lady on your credit card, plane tickets and more. They also offer maps to show your new estate, including the immensely detailed hand-drawn 1611 map by John Speed, held by the National Library of Scotland. Right now they have deep discounts for the Memorial Day sale. And remember that Father's Day is coming up, so now's a perfect time to buy a nice gift. Plus, if you use our code Kings and Generals, you'll get an extra 10% off. Go to establishedtitles.com slash kingsandgenerals to get your gifts now and help support the channel. Since the outbreak of war with the Empire of Japan in 1937, the Chinese defenders had proved to be a resilient and fierce foe, one that had continued to resist even when the prospects of outside assistance seemed hopeless. In the past, both China and Japan had been looked down upon by their Western allies, something that gave rise to the same Japanese anti-Western sentiment that ignited the Pacific War. Now, Chiang Kai-shek had the perfect opportunity to be treated as an equal by the Allies, yet the price he would pay for this would be heavy. The road was long for the Chinese in their efforts to get recognized as the valuable and important ally that they were, but already their contributions to the Burma campaign and the Doolittle Raid had a tremendous significance for the future of the Pacific War, both allowing the Burma army to survive to fight another day and allowing the US to carry out one of the most important raids of the war, a huge morale booster that put the Japanese Empire on a course towards their eventual defeat. The aftermath of this last event, however, would also see the start of a Japanese campaign in retaliation against the Chinese inhabitants that had aided or given shelter to the American pilots after their surprise attack against Tokyo. As we will recall, 15 B-25 bombers had crash-landed in the provinces of Zhejiang and Jiangxi due to bad weather and the failure to warn the Chinese about incoming landings, their surviving crews then being rescued by local inhabitants, guerrillas or missionaries. One of the most important effects of the Doolittle Raid was that it was a shock for the Japanese commanders, who didn't believe the Allies had the capacity to launch such an assault. With their failure to correctly protect the Emperor, many resources would then be redirected for the defence of the home islands, and steps would be taken to prevent a similar attack in the future. As such, the Chinese airports in Zhejiang and Jiangxi were revealed as a dangerous blind spot in the defence of the homeland, from where American aircraft could directly attack Japan. A campaign was thus ordered to eliminate China as a bombing staging area, one in which the merciless Japanese soldiers would take the opportunity to also hunt for the bomber crews with the vengeful purpose of punishing them and those who had aided them. Back in early April, the Chinese 23rd and 32nd Army groups had managed to infiltrate into the Xuancheng Guangdu area after pushing back the 13th Army of Lieutenant General Sawada Shigeru. In response, the Japanese were preparing to recapture this territory with a pincer movement by April 20th, but the new orders from Tokyo forced them to change the aim of their operation towards the destruction of the Chinese airbases in Zhejiang province. 
The main objectives of Operation Seigo were the airfields in the Lishui, Chuzhou and Yushan areas, as well as the city of Shangrao, the headquarters of the Third War Area of General Gu Jutong. For the operation, Sawada would receive some reinforcements from the North China Area Army and the 11th Army, thus gathering some five divisions and three mixed brigades for a total of 53 infantry battalions to be employed in the offensive. Meanwhile, the 11th Army of General Anami, after routing the 128th Division on May 5th and launching a diversionary attack into the Yuyang area, would finally attack the western flank of Gu's command to eliminate Chinese power in Jiangxi and stop any reinforcements that could be rushed to relieve the defenders. The Japanese would further be supported by the 1st Air Brigade, reinforced with two bomber regiments, which had the mission to destroy the enemy airfields and their aircraft, particularly in the town of Chuchao. By May 13th, Sawada had concentrated his forces on the Yuhang Fenghua line, with the 32nd Division coming in late at the right flank of the 13th Army. Two days later, the Japanese would decide to commence their initial offensive, directly advancing to destroy the Chinese fortified positions of Yi Wu, Haitouzhen, and Changlejen, while the 116th Division advanced along the Fuchun River, with the 32nd Division slowly coming in behind them. On May 18th, the first clash with the Chinese forces occurred, as the 22nd Division assaulted the fortified position of the new 9th Army east of Changlejen. The defenders tried to stop the Japanese advance with tenacity, but on the next day, the 70th Division and the Kono Mixed Brigade would arrive on the battlefield and would attack the flanks of the new 9th Army, thus forcing the Chinese forces to retreat in disarray. At the same time, the 15th Division also overcame a detachment of the 9th at Paitouzhen, leaving the way completely open for Yi Wu. Attacks against the city by the various divisions began immediately, and by May 22nd, the Japanese had consolidated their control over the sector east of Jinhua. Now, Sawada decided to shift his efforts towards the right flank of the army, where the 116th and 32nd Divisions were advancing into the area south of Jandu. They were to be supported by the 15th Division, which after taking Paito Jen, had turned west towards Lanxi. By the night of May 24th, the 15th was ready to attack Lanxi, defended by elements of the 26th Army, while the 70th Division had gotten in front of Jinhua, and the 22nd Division was in the vicinity of Wu Yi. Although the attack on Lanxi was successful, the 70th didn't fare that well against the strong opposition of the 74th Army, which forced it to request reinforcements to overcome the stalwart Chinese defenders. At this point, however, Chinese forces elsewhere were retreating without the intention of making any major resistance, so the Japanese started to hotly pursue them. Gu Jutong's plan was to slowly draw in the invaders into the Chuzhou area, where they would be encircled and annihilated in a decisive battle. Yet Sawada's advance had such strength and speed that the Chinese forces could hardly establish any organized defensive position. By the end of May, Lanxi and Jinhua had fallen, and by June 3rd, four divisions and the Kono Mix Brigade had assembled in front of Chuzhou to launch a coordinated assault. In the meantime, the 11th Army's task force had concentrated behind the Ganjiang River by May 22nd, then moving to the Wugui mountain area in preparation for the launch of the operation. At dusk on May 31st, Anami ordered his forces to forge the Fuha River, repelling the meager defenses of the overwhelmed 100th Army and forcing it to retreat to some better defensive positions at the town of Jinshan. Immediately sensing the danger of the situation, General Shi Yu of the 9th War Area sent the 79th Army along the Ganjiang River to stop the Japanese advance and relieve some pressure from his compatriots. But by June 3rd, the 34th Division had managed to overcome the Chinese opposition at Jinshan, and the 3rd Division had advanced as far as Yunshan Jian. Anami then sent forward the Iwanaga Detachment along the Zhejiang Jiangxi Railway, while the 34th Division was redirected to support the Takahara Detachment in its efforts to stop and destroy the 79th Army, which was quickly advancing towards Jianping Shang. On June 4th, the 3rd Division continued to press forward and met an advance party of the 79th Army at Linchuan, successfully routing the enemy and capturing the city. At the same time, 
the Imai and Ide detachment engaged rear elements of the 79th Army to the west, managing to tie them down, while the 34th Division and the Tekahara detachment approached to decisively annihilate the defenders. Thus, the escape routes of the 79th Army were severed, and the Chinese were now at the mercy of Anami's forces. Meanwhile, further east, Sawada was preparing to penetrate the strong enemy positions at Chuzhou from both sides of the town, and on June 3rd, he finally launched the attack. Despite the valiant Chinese resistance, the Japanese attack rapidly overwhelmed the defenders, completing the encirclement of the town by June 4th. Yet just when the Japanese were about to score a decisive victory and destroy the Chinese presence in the region, a heavy downpour of rain started during the night, swelling the surrounding rivers and making it look like Chinese reinforcements from the south and southwest were appearing. This lull in the fight allowed the defenders to break out from the encirclement and successfully escape southwards by June 7th. Sawada then left the Kono Mix Brigade and the 116th Division to guard Chuzhou, while the 32nd, 15th and 22nd Divisions started a pursuit of the fleeing enemy units towards the town of Guangfang. Although the flood retarded the progress of the pursuit, the 32nd Division got to seize Yushan and its important airbase by June 12th, and the other two divisions captured Guangfang two days later. From there, the 22nd Division would then advance on Shangrao, which was occupied by the early hours of June 15th. With the fall of Chuzhou and Yushan, Sawada now directed the Kono Mix Brigade to capture the last of their objectives, Li Shui, and its key airfield. On June 16th, the brigade departed Long Yu towards the town of Wu Yi, from where the Japanese then advanced on Li Shui by June 22nd. With the total collapse of the Chinese presence in the region, Li Shui was seized without any kind of opposition on June 24th, finally completing all the directives of the operation. At the same time this was happening, Anami prepared to deal a decisive blow against the 79th Army. With the 3rd Division attacking from Lin Chuan, and the 34th Division completing the encirclement as Chongren, the Japanese constantly hammered the 79th Army until the unit was totally routed by June 8th. From there, the 3rd Division and the Tekahara Detachment were sent to pursue the retreating Chinese soldiers towards the town of Nancheng. On June 11th, the last remnants of the 79th Army were engaged by the invaders, completely annihilating them and occupying Nancheng and its airfield in the following day. By June 15th, Jin Shi had also fallen to the 3rd Division, and Enami was now in control of the whole region south of the Junshan Lake. Concurrently, the 38th Division was sent to support the Iwanaga Detachment in its drive across the Zhejiang Jiangxi Railway. By June 10th, the Iwanaga Detachment had gotten to the Baita River, but their advance was stopped by the presence of the 100th Army at Yingtang. On June 15th, when the 34th finally arrived in the region, the Japanese launched a strong attack that managed to send the Chinese defenders packing. The following day, the 34th Division occupied Kuei-Chi, while the Iwanaga Detachment continued eastwards to link with the 13th Army. On June 30th, Sawada also sent the Yezu Detachment from the 22nd Division to advance westwards and link with the 11th Army. By July 1st, the Yazoo and Iwanaga detachments met at Hangfeng and eliminated the last remnants of the 100th Army. This victory brought an end to the Japanese offensive in the Zhejiang and Jiangxi provinces, but Japanese occupation of the recently conquered territories would continue in the following months. With their objective of reducing Chinese air power complete, the invaders now turned to hunt for the American pilots that had bailed in the region and to punish those Chinese villages that had aided them. In the words of Father Wendelin Dunker, they shot any man, woman, child, cow, hog, or just about anything that moved. They raped any woman from the ages of 10 to 65, and before burning the town, they thoroughly looted it. The city of Nancheng was hit particularly bad, with Japanese soldiers rounding up some 800 women and girls and herding them into a storehouse where they would be raped time and again in what American missionaries dubbed the Rape of Nancheng. But the invaders didn't only resort to raping and murdering, they were also set on devastating the land as much as possible. 
towns and villages were looted, farm animals were slaughtered, crops were set on fire, and bridges, roads and airfields were completely destroyed. When the Japanese finally started their retreat in early August, they left behind nothing more than destruction and chaos. But it was those that had aided the Doolittle raiders that would suffer the most, as they would be subjected to sadistic tortures by the invaders before they met their demise. On one account, Japanese soldiers in Nanchung forced some Chinese men who had fed the American pilots to eat feces before lining them up for a bullet contest to see how many of them would be killed by a single bullet. In Chongqing, Chang was completely infuriated about the consequences of aiding his so-called allies, who still continued to undervalue the might of the Chinese defenders. When the Zhejiang Jiangxi campaign was over, Chang cabled to Washington to remark that the Japanese troops slaughtered every man, woman and child in those areas. Chinese estimates put the civilian death toll at 250,000 people, which is supported by the tales of American missionaries who witnessed the devastation wreaked by the Japanese soldiers. Once again, the Japanese Empire had shown to the world that they were ruthless and merciless invaders, who were indeed capable of treating their fellow human beings as beasts. Thanks again to our sponsor, Established Titles. Buy a small plot of land in Scotland and become a lady or a lord, or give this title as an amazing and easy gift. In return, Established Titles plants a tree to protect the pristine forests of our planet. Hit the Memorial Day sale and pick up the perfect Father's Day gift, and use our discount code KINGSANDGENERALS at establishedtitles.com slash kingsandgenerals to get a further 10% off. Next week, we finally turn to Midway where one of, if not the most, decisive engagement of the Pacific War was nearing fruition. From this point onwards, nothing would be the same. If you don't want to miss our coverage of this focal battle, make sure you are subscribed and have pressed the bell button to see it. Please consider liking, commenting and sharing, it helps immensely. Our videos would be impossible without our kind patrons and YouTube channel members, whose ranks you can join via the links in the description to know our schedule. Get early access to our videos, access our Discord, and much more. This is the Kings and Generals channel, and we will catch you on the next one.